if that's against freedom of speech, then I'll happily stay as against freedom of speech. If if having the press say lies to the people is freedom of speech, then I don't want to pardon it. A number of tabloids heavily promote the idea that leaving the EU will save the UK £350 million a week. This is later proved to be inaccurate, despite being influential in voting behaviour. It is argued that the media should be more heavily regulated and that charges should be bought on companies that promote fake news. Do you agree with the regulation? come down on media outlets for expressing a kind of an idea. Th that's a slippery slope. Does fake news qualify as an idea? Because if you're misquoting, for example, facts, that is wrong. That is just misinforming people and it's, it's almost criminal. Well, it's not. You would save £350 million, technically, by leaving the EU. Yeah, well, through some weird math. But yeah. like, yeah. media should be hold, like, if, especially if they present something as a fact and not an idea, you should be accountable for it. Yeah, but it's up to the reader to... No, information is too weaponized for it to be taken lightly like that. I think if you're in the media, you're responsible and you have to take account for that responsibility. So if we, if we clamp down on, on, on newspapers and things like that, then it's only going to serve to empower these alternative forms of media that have grown in the last few years. Uh, journalism, in a modern democracy is like the fourth phase of democracy after the executive, the judiciary and the, and the uh, uh, so all those three powers have checks on them. Why, do, why can the press not have a check? It's just unfair. But like then we already have like laws in place for this and that. No, they should be probably more mindful, but should it be like the business of the state to get into all of this? People who read the 300 million on the bus thing, hmm. They might not have necessarily even completely believed that. I think we potentially underestimate people in thinking that they, that they are just so simple. All these leave voters are so stupid that they read that and they went straight to the polls and just ticked the box just like that, right? I think people I think tend to sense. want to blame the media because it's, it's, it's an easy thing to blame. For me, it's more systemic and it's more like, the, the, you know, by like redoing the vote or editing newspapers, I kind of just like tackling symptoms of the problem. The real underlying problem is that there are vast swathes of people in the country who are upset and and feel angry about the fact that their economic situation has effectively deteriorated in the last 20, 30 years. The UK actually gets more money from the EU than it actually gives it. And that has been proved time and again. So if you're talking about numbers, that is a blatant lie. The statistics probably are a lie, but the basic sentiment is what is convinced people. And yeah. I don't think that that many people saw that figure and went straight to the polls based on that. I think they were already going to do it. That was the core argument of the Leave campaign. It wasn't. I don't think it, it was. was. It's, been made, into like, like it wasn't. Said, huh? it's been made into something much bigger than it was because it was a lie. And it's something that the yeah. Remainers can jump on and say the whole campaign was false. To then say, oh, people are being misled by that. It's not. It's that they actually firmly believe that it should be the British government who decides where the money goes and that they invest it in things that people care about, like yeah. the NHS. Um, I don't believe in no platforming. I don't think it's right to shut down avenues of opinion. I think you need to have an open discussion and not demonise people who fall into certain categories. At the same time, I do believe that the media is powerful and can lead people to think the wrong things. Why isn't there a discourse around government policy or um, austerity? The stakes are much higher in developing countries, do you know? Because fake news causes sometimes, in countries like India, it causes riots. People die because fake news is spread through uh, unregulated news channels and uh, social media. Why well, are we talking yeah. about India or talking about Brexit? You no, know, if, if you believe that freedom of press should be defended, then do you believe that it should only be defended inside the borders of the UK? I, mean, I don't want to get drawn away from something that, that we weren't initially talking about. I mean, it's not getting drawn away from it. It's, it, it, it really is a crucial factor because are, you, are we saying that we want this press to be regulated only because of the Brexit campaign or do we say we want it exactly. to be regulated because it should be regulated? But doesn't it bother you guys to have state interference into press, which is like basically like a pillar it's, of our freedoms? I, I really don't think it's state interference into press. It, it's, it just, is, it is. it's just state, it's just be, there being laws about 
what you can say. You can say only things that are true. You can't claim something to be true when it isn't. It's very risky to put a, a, a mouthpiece over the press because all press is going to be biased in some way. To claim something that, is true when that. it isn't, for me, that is blatantly wrong. And if, that, if that's against freedom of speech, then I'll happily stay as against freedom of speech. If, if having the press say lies to the people is freedom of speech, then I don't want a part in it. The government begins a campaign to leave the EU following a narrow victory in a public referendum. However, internal divisions in government and stored negotiations with the EU has led to calls for a second referendum. Pro-Leave voters call this a clear attempt to undermine democracy. Do you agree with the calls for a second referendum? I fundamentally believe that you need to give people the chance to change their mind. And still, the parties are split. You have the DUP who are not happy with the backstop, so the whole island border is a huge issue which isn't being solved. I think if we want a, a kind of true answer, we need to kind of put it back to the people. Yeah, but that's not a good reason. <laughs> like, call for a second I mean, vote. That's why you shouldn't have voted to leave. Yeah, like on the <laughs> That's what people place. were telling you. It's like, oh, so guys, we don't know how to do it. So like, are you sure, question mark? Like, it doesn't really work that way. Yeah. There should never have been a referendum in the first place. <laughs> but that's besides the I mean, point. Yeah, that's I, don't the point. Don't <laughs> I don't think it is besides the point because I think it was poorly thought, thought out, poorly campaigned. Okay. And as a result, the results of it are are um, illegitimate. Because but it's ridiculous. the issue here is that then you're setting a very dangerous precedent going the forward. The precedent was set, and the, the, the referendum initially was a no, ridiculous no, no. idea. The precedent becomes because, when you tell yeah. the people, yeah. actually, you guys didn't vote right, right so yeah. vote yeah. again. So yeah. That is the precedent. That is yeah. very dangerous for a democracy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's absurd uh, to ask for a second referendum because the nature of referendums is that you have you decide in totality. But then backtracking after uh, ha having made a decision is it just shows lack of maturity in a democratic process. I, don't, I disagree. It's like saying we shouldn't have elections every four years because no. you're just going to change your mind every time. If we don't have a second referendum, then what is the solution to this? What? Crash out of it with no deal. Yes. You think yeah, more you, people, you made so, your bed sorry. rely on it. Yes. So, okay, okay. Exactly. Taking that sentiment, more people have made the bed of no deal. More people voted to have a, a dreadful exit from the European Union than did not want to leave. That's ridiculous. It's, there's three there's three parties here. There's um, people who want to remain, people who want no deal, and people who want Theresa May's deal, effectively. Mm. And the remain vote is the biggest of those three. As but. an EU citizen, I think this is just kind of a way for the UK to put more pressure on the EU to try and find a deal, to mm. try and find a deal with them. And I don't think the EU should have to settle a deal with yeah. the UK. We've given what we believe are fair stand, our fair standards for you guys to leave with a deal, you haven't accepted it, that's not our problem. How will the UK be perceived by the rest of the world? We're already having problems with people questioning democracy in the West. Do we really, as Westerners, want to keep people questioning <clears throat> these democracies? If the politicians aren't doing their job properly in informing you know, the population of what it is they're really voting for, I think it's it's fair to say, oh, you regret something. However, the problem won't be solved by having just another revote. The problem will be solved once we start to change the structures that allow for this to happen in the first place. I mean, it's funny that we go from a position in the last question where yeah. the referendum was completely flawed because this this in, this disinformation, and now we're holding up in different yeah. frames of some sort of bastion of, I never, of, of democracy. No, no, no. The change needs to be in the structure of the, the campaign. That's where the change should have been. If you voted based on misinformation, all that's telling me is that that misinformation shouldn't re-exist in the future. Now, three years down the line, when there's been huge amounts of negotiations, and there are some, like, crucial points where, the, where people can't decide what's going to happen. For example, the Irish border. Why, why can't that be enough reason for people to think, actually, maybe we should reassess our yeah. relationship with the EU? That's fine, but not through a referendum. I'd yes. rather have theories of make for general election, yeah. the yeah. Labour but coming around. No, 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 that. wait for a second, because yeah. I don't talk that much, so let me talk. <laughs> um, but like, Labour come up and be like, vote for us, we, un like, we cancel the whole Brexit thing. I think that's much more democratic than call for a second referendum. I think the ultimate thing is that there aren't equal relationships in the world. And it, the EU is definitely a very kind of isolated, exclusive bloc. And stepping out of that would enable a different form of 
relationship to happen, which would even the playing field because the EU is extremely strong and extremely powerful. But it is like a very positive thing. Under EU law, the UK cannot dictate the movement of EU citizens across its borders. Brexit campaigners argue that immigration should be dictated by politicians who are elected to represent British people, not by politicians elected by nations from across Europe. They say that immigration is a valuable part of British culture, but that there should be a limit and it should be dictated by Britain. Do you think Britain should control all immigration across its borders? only control part of the immigration policy of the country um, and and on top of that I feel like we're pretty much like we're all pretty much aligned on what we want in terms of like uh, rates of immigration and stuff like that like I think it's a very reasonable request yeah, for a sovereign is. nation to make that I want to control the people yeah. who come into my country it is the idea that be that is being labeled as odd is absolutely normal outside the EU when you go to some other country you have to get away this is an exception the EU yeah. thing is an exception well no well I mean I think it's odd for the EU for EU citizens to be able to reside in a country that isn't theirs without having to go through any process I don't think that there should be like regulations in sense of uh, you know choosing selecting who gets to stay here because of what job they have but I mean I think there should be some sort of uh, process for EU citizens to say well we're living here now I don't think that you know someone coming from Germany can should be able to just decide overnight to come to France and be like okay I'm living here now ultimately it's it's anti-democratic to so strip a nation of its of its power to control levels of immigration it's it's stripping it's it's preventing people of of the democracy from having an effect on policy and policy that they consider to be extremely important <laughs> It's, no, but it's, it's not the same. No, I think to, yeah, to say like, it's the same is But it's a concept of the wrong. EU, right? It's like we get together, we're under a union. You give up, obviously you're going to give up your, a part of your sovereignty mm. over some sort of a common project, a common future. It's the price to pay. I mean, it's you're like not very divided uh, because I think people aren't able to understand each other. When, whenever these kinds of feelings get in the way of people being able to live together, that's where you draw the line and you, 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 it needs to, yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. Pay. I mean, you're not losing it's, it sovereignty it's, it's because we, us, we're still stronger together. You've got a vast number of people who feel like immigration is a massive issue and they can't articulate that because it's been removed from the national discourse. Then that's, that's completely um, against the principles of, a, of, of sovereignty. And the first chance they get to do something dangerous, like leave the entire thing, they use it. So by stripping away these rights from these people, you, you risk a further, further destabilization down the line. But the problem is that it falls into this discourse that immigration is a bad thing. That it, as soon as you- It is for some people. I, I don't think it is. It's other things that are bad. It's lack of government funding into local areas. Okay. It's not immigration that is the problem, but it's an, such an easy scapegoat. So that's then to say, oh, let's take back our sovereignty and control immigration and all the problems will go away. is completely the wrong argument to have because actually EU migration that it is like a very positive thing. The most important thing to take from this is that there are people who uh, exist and they don't see things from your perspective. We're all very similar and we all really agree on, on a lot of things. I think, generally speaking. Yeah, I guess we're all limited from our own experience at the end of the day. <laughs> but that's what makes it for a beautiful debate, right? <laughs>